To get this started, I'm going to put this on slideshow and just show some pictures while I say a couple of things. Even though today we think of leather as almost a, uh, a luxury item, once upon a time it was a very important necessity in the life of the people who lived around here, for not just for personal use, but for uh, accoutrements for the horses, for the wagons, the stagecoaches, uh, and many things that we don't think about anymore. Leather was absolutely necessary. Today it's been, uh, a lot of the uses of it have been made useless. I mean, we don't need a lot of the things that it used to be used for, and the uh, things like rubber and plastics have replaced it. The Middle Atlantic states were once the major producers of leather in this country, and right in the middle of the Middle Atlantic states was Pennsylvania, uh, a major producer of leather. The uh, the reason for that was the availability of the stuff you needed to make leather. Bark from the trees of oak and hemlock. To a lesser degree, shumac was also used, but mostly uh, oak and hemlock. And the uh, early production of leather in town started down in Dutchtown. Dutchtown was where the early Germans settled. Germans and people affiliated with Germany like Swiss. And we're going to take a look at, uh, first of all, the Coons, K-U-H-N-S. The Coons Tannery. And to do this, I'll have to shift gears just a little bit. And this is my version of the Coons Tannery. There were two buildings here. They're actually two separate buildings made of stone. The Coons family lived right above the tannery, right up here, which was probably not a very smart thing. In the old European uh, countries that most of the traditions of work came from, it was a law very often that you never allowed a tannery to be built upwind of a town or a, or, or a city because the places generated a lot of foul odors. Don Hill from the tannery lived the Weldies. And old Henry Weldy worked at the tannery at some points working as a skin dresser and he also made uh, the leather breeches that the frontiersmen wore. We can say that the Coons Tannery was in place as early as 1789 when uh, Henry Weldy bought his property down here. He, the deed that he had mentioned the Coons property uh, next door, and that was about 1789, right to, the, right to the east. Now that's what's there now. We're looking at, uh, we're looking at Pittsburgh Street. This is an alley called Union. This building is here now, these two buildings. They don't show up in, on mapping until 1891, so we know for sure by that time that the Coons Tannery was gone. And we'll see other mapping for the Coons Tannery. 1854, this is Pittsburgh Street. This is Pennsylvania, up here, Pennsylvania. Otterman Street, this is the Coons Tannery. This was the Coons House. This building up here had earlier been the Coons Tavern. 
It was a place where, a place where all the uh, Dutchmen, the, the, the Germans in town, used to gather. They had their political meetings there, and the uh, place was a, you know, it was their center of, for gathering. Now here's a map I did that might help to clarify things a little bit. This is the Coons Tannery over here. This is Pittsburgh Street, Pennsylvania Avenue. The Coons family had a tavern. This was Philip up here that had a tavern. It was John Coons that had the uh, tannery. After he passed away, his sons Reuben and Samuel ran it. Other things across the street were Christopher Truby's pottery. There was a weaver named Henry Fess. Attorneys had a tin shop. This was the center of Dutch town. The Dutch, the Germans were very industrious fellows. This just shows an advertisement of Samuel and Reuben Coons. This is mapping from the courthouse showing the contemporary division of land and who owns it. This is a map I did from old deeds showing the same plots of ground but as it was in the late 1700s and early 1800s. The Coons Tannery sat right here. And an interesting feature is right uphill of that was one of the three or four public springs. For the tanneries, you had to have a lot of water. And this public spring allowed water to run downhill for the tannery. Uh, what, two of the local tanners, Augustus Vogel, Adam Kettering, actually had a United States patter, patent for the uh, improvement of the tanning process. And by the early 1850s, the Coons had let go of the tannery because Sam, Co Sam Coons passed away. And Augustus Vogel purchased the old Coons tannery and ran that. This shows the Coons tannery in 1886. And if you look at it closely, closely, what you can see, the buildings are still there, but it's no longer a tannery. It's, it's, it's been converted into tenements. And then in about five years, the tenant, the, uh, those buildings were torn down and other buildings were put up, which are there today. And I think that's about it for this one because that, that transitions to the next thing, the court tannery on the other side of town. And we're going to say so long right now, and we'll see you again.